Hello friends, Sentinel H here, and welcome back to our Applied Energistics tutorial series. Um, in this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the inscribe. <laughs> There's a chicken on top of it. The inscriber. <laughs> oh man, that's fantastic. Um, we were going to, I know in the last episode I mentioned that the next thing we'd do is take a look at the uh, simplest ME system you could make. But you can't actually do that until you make the inscriber. So I figured, well, we need to have a, a video about the inscriber specifically because the next episode of this is going to have a lot of stuff in it. Because there are quite a few pieces you need to make to make the first basic ME thing. Um, so now we're going to talk about the inscriber, and the next episode we'll be able to talk about the simplest ME setup you can possibly make. So on this board in front of me, um, you're going to see the recipes that the inscriber is used to make. Um, there, it's used to make processors, logic processors, calculation processors, and engineering processors. And you need these to make anything in, uh, in the ME network. You know, ME... Um, circuit uh, ME um, disks need stuff from that need, need processors uh, ME interfaces and terminals and, and, and chests and all that stuff needs these processors so first let's take a look at how to craft the inscriber a fairly nondescript looking uh, machine uh, the inscriber is crafted turn that off, um, with a uh, flux crystal uh, two sticky pistons and five iron ingots now the thing about this uh, flux crystal in this recipe is it doesn't need to be pure. It can be a normal flux crystal. The thing is, I highly recommend using the pure versions of crystals whenever you're able to in a recipe, because they're not used for as many things. All right. So once you have your inscriber built, you have to power it. If you look at that tooltip in the bottom right, you can see that it takes some power. It contains zero of three uh, RF. The, um, the great thing about applying energistics is that it's very, very compatible with other forms of power. Now, the simplest way you could power this, uh, if you're coming off of our previous video, is with a vibration chamber. You can power the inscriber with a vibration chamber. So if I place it down, and I place some cable on it, if I hold shift. Now, I, you may notice there's no sound in this. I'm, for some reason, I've got a really weird humming sound in the world, and it's to do with block volume. So I have to turn block volume. Um, so if, if we put this ME cable here, uh, and you could use quartz as well, and we put some coal in, in the, uh, vibra vibra the vibration chamber, you notice there's no power going into the inscriber. It's because the inscriber doesn't take power unless it's actually running, whereas vibration chambers, they'll just uh, burn the crap out of this coal. Or maybe that doesn't burn until it needs it. I don't know. All I know is that this thing doesn't take power unless it's being used for something. So now that we've given our inscriber some power, um, let's, uh, let's talk about crafting some of these things. But actually first, um, keep in mind that you don't need to use vibration chambers to power this thing. You can use the energy acceptor, uh, which will allow you to power it with, you know, pretty much any other power source, especially RF. Um, but we're going to keep this here. But just know that if you can connect it, 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 if it can produce RF or something like that, uh, chances are good if it produces power and it's a major mod, you can use the energy acceptor to um, use it to power uh, the inscriber and anything else. So, on to what we can make with it. Um, well, we need to make all these things. And uh, if you can see, I've, I've kind of built it like a flowchart. You've got the, uh, the um, items that you have to input at the top, then the press that you need to use, and then the output from it. This should actually be up there now that I think about it. So, the four things we need are um, to use the inscriber to make are these printed silicons, the printed logic circuits, the calculation circuit, and the engineering circuit. And then we can use the inscriber to turn these into the final processors. There's quite a few steps here, um, but we'll go through it step by step as we make it. So the first thing that you're going to need to get your hands on is some silicon, because you need silicon for all of these things. Okay. Now, Applied Energistics has its own recipe for silicon. However, Applied Energistics will use the recipe for silicon from other mods that you have installed. And this is not really a mod that you use by itself, so chances are the base recipe might be uh, disabled in favor of a different recipe. Uh, in this case, it's favoring the Ender.io recipe that's in this pack. However, uh, just so you know, 
the uh, in applied energistics, the base way that you make um, silicon is just to take a furnace and stick some certus quartz dust or some nether quartz dust in there and, and smelt it. And that, that won't work here. If I go ahead and grab some coal and shove it in here, it doesn't actually start cooking it because in the mod pack that I'm running, uh, it's been overwritten by the Ender IO silicon. Okay, so whenever you're using Applied Energistics, uh, all you have to do is go into the Inscriber, uh, click on Recipes, and then scroll over until you find the silicon, and then see which silicon it's currently, the mod is currently using. Okay, so this is the UI for the Inscriber. It takes a press at the top or bottom, actually, it doesn't matter, and an item in order to, uh, to do anything. So let's go up here, and we can... Uh, grab the press out of here. No, it didn't actually work because I'm in creative mode. Um, darn it, I was counting on that. Let's just grab the press out of here then. Uh, and we'll grab all of them. Just goes to show I don't really uh, think of everything when I'm doing these. Okay, so we've got our presses. Remember, you have to get these from those meteors, like the one over there that we saw earlier. So if I take this inscriber silicon press, I can put it in this bottom slot or this top slot, it doesn't matter. And then I go ahead and place the silicon in the other one. I mean, in the center slot. This is where you place the items to be um, processed by the plate. You can actually see it. <laughs> right. um, well, I'll show you that now. If we place it there. You can actually watch. This thing is animated. You can see the press at the top and then the item. And when it finally fires, it, it actually is animated. That's pretty neat. All right. Most of the time you won't be around to see it because... This is the type of, uh, of machine that you just want to, later on you want to automate it, and then, you know, because you have to use this thing a lot. Because you, you need to make a ton of these processors, so Inscriber is a bit funky. In a future episode, I'll show you how to use the ME system to fully automate your Inscriber system. But for now, it's uh, beyond the scope of what we're doing now. So as you can see with the Inscriber press, Silicon press, and some Silicon, I've made some printed Silicon. Now, the same thing goes for these things, like the calculation press. And if we look over here, that takes uh, this uh, quartz crystal. Um, it needs to be pure. You need a pure Sardis quartz crystal to make a calculation press, which is why you have to use, um, you have to grow your stuff, because you can't get this other than growing it. The engineering press, which requires diamonds, and these are different, basically different tiers. Um, it goes gold, diamond, and certus. So you'll use mostly the logic processors, at least for the lower level stuff, and then you'll start using engineering and calculation uh, for the higher end stuff. So you're going to use a lot of logic press, of, of logic uh, circuits. And that's made with gold ingots. So you'll, need, you'll take a gold ingot with your logic press, and it'll give you the printed logic circuit. Okay? Now that we've made these we need to use silicon and one of these and combine it to make the actual circuit so for that you will take your printed silicon it doesn't matter if you put it on the top or the bottom but you can only put one in at a time you can't fill this up for later which is a bit sad but the way it works um, you know it doesn't allow that and then you'll take your logic printed logic circuit and put it on the bottom Okay, you can see that it goes in there. And then you need to add another item to make it actually print. Now, the the hint as to what that is, if you didn't want to check the recipe, is these red lines. It is, of course, redstone. So if I put redstone dust in here, you can see the power level starts going up. You can see all the stuff inside the inscriber. And it'll press and make us a logic processor. The same thing goes for the other one put some redstone in there and once again you can only have one item in there at a time and that's what makes it a little annoying to try and automate this thing because every time you have to use this if you're using it manually you have to individually place one resource in each slot wait for it to be done and then you can place the next one in so you really can't set it and forget it until you fully automate it but those are the main things you'll be making using the inscriber now you can make other things namely you can use a block of iron to duplicate a press. I remember I, I mentioned that previously in, uh, in the Meteor episode. A block of iron with a press will make a copy of that press. Really only useful 
if you're playing on a multiplayer server or if because for I, I can't imagine a single reason why you would ever take these out of your base or wherever you've got your inscriber set up it just doesn't seem like that's something you do so I wouldn't ever find myself losing these so if you're on a multiplayer server and you want to sell some of these to people or something I don't know you can make copies using a block of iron so that's pretty much it for the inscriber at the moment those are the only recipes that it has it says this is its entire reason for existing is to make these circuits but believe me you were gonna make hundreds of these things by the time you get anywhere in player logistics everything about the enemy system requires logic processors at least logic processors and then you'll get into engineering and calculation and you get to some higher level stuff so anyway that's the inscriber it's pretty easy to use it's just once you've got your presses and your items and uh, yeah just check the recipes it'll show you how to use it uh, remember that you need pure service to make the calculation circuits so that's the inscriber like I said in a future episode once we've gone over the Emmy's network a bit I'll show you how to fully automate inscribers so you never have to manually place these items in there again so anyway I hope you enjoy the applied energistic series um, stay tuned for future episodes as well I'm I'm planning on starting a uh, uh, an immersive engineering tutorial series if you'd like to see that and I'm going to start working on getting the Radicraft tutorial series going again it's just that now I'm 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 babysitting full time I don't have a ton of time as nearly as much time to work on the channel as I can before so I'm trying to streamline the processes so anyway uh, stay tuned for future episodes I'm Sutton H and I'm signing out